the site search report. So the site search report highlights on-site search activity. So these are users who use your site search bar and how they affect key metrics. To access this report, we're going to go left nav, behavior, site search, and we're going to start on the overview screen. So as with other overview reports, the site search overview gives us a high level view of different site search activities. So in this particular report, we can see that about 16 sessions people used our search bar. Um, there are about 32 unique searches. Uh, results page views per search. So this would be how, how many, uh, if you have multiple results pages when somebody does search, what's the average there? And we're at about one here because we don't have that big of a website. It uh, gives us an idea of the percentage of people who exit after searching, uh, the number of search refinements made, the time they spend on the site after search, and the average search depth. As we scroll down this report a little bit, we can toggle between a few different things and see the different search terms that people are searching for. Um, we can see site search categories and also the start page, meaning where they searched first. Let's jump into some of the more detailed reports. First, we'll access the usage report. So usage is a very high level report that gives us an idea of visits without site search and compares them to visits with site search. So what this helps us understand is how much of an asset is site search. So um, for example, visits without site search, we have about 1,700, the vast, uh, hot, vast number of uh, sessions. Um, we see things uh, like bounce rate, et cetera, but what we want to focus on here is probably transactions and getting an idea of what the e-commerce conversion rate is people who, with, from people who do not use search and compare that to people who do use search. So we have a much smaller number who are using search, but in this particular case, we did pick up a transaction and a little bit of revenue, which made our e-commerce conversion rate a lot higher. So these metrics aren't really a tell-all, but they do give you a general idea of users who have to search. Um, is, it, is it an asset that they did? Meaning is it is the search an asset and that it helped them find what they're looking for? Or maybe it didn't. So maybe we find that users who do have to use search tend to um, convert terribly. And in which case we want to maybe improve search uh, or something like that. Um, the next report we want to look at is the search terms report, and this is usually most interesting to business owners, and in this particular report we're going to see the actual keywords which people are searching for. Um, so again, on our makeup site, uh, we find that beige is common, um, finishers, foundation, mascara, pink, um, so we've got a number of different terms, and we do get metrics specific to each of those terms. How this report becomes useful is obviously an understanding what types of things people do not find just by browsing. So it's, it's very common that people turn to search when they can't find what they're looking for. So if we know that people are commonly searching for a specific color, for example, or a specific type of product, we may want to review some global elements such as navigation um, to help them find that better through browsing. We may want to bring some of this to light on the home page, for example. So it's a makeup site. Maybe we could uh, categorize all of our uh, types of makeup by color and do sort of a color swab on the home page and allow them to filter products by that. So there'd be a number of actionable items we could do based on search. In this particular site, the search volume is very low. We actually had just recently set up search tracking, as you can see from the chart above. Um, but over time, we really want to get a feeling for what the common search trends are and then try to improve user experience that way. The second big use for this is, which is also very important, is understanding that if somebody is searching a certain term very often is actually us performing that search on the site and identifying the search results. Saying, okay, well, people are often searching, let's say, for beige, for example. When I search beige on my website, what appears? And if I'm not happy with what those search results are, I may want to customize those a bit. I may know that there are 10 beige products I have and only two are showing for some reason. So we do, in some cases, want to go through some of the major searches ourselves to try to understand whether the results are the quality we want. Uh, most often, out-of-the-box on-site search tools are not um, you know, all that great, so we, we would just want to keep an eye on some of those top search terms. Lastly, we want to look at the site search pages report. So in this report, we get an idea from which page searches happen. So a lot of times searches happen uh, from the home page. A lot of times searches, and that's what we see right here, a lot of times searches will happen from the search page itself, so they may have performed a search and then performed a second search. And that's good to look at, to be honest, because you, you can say, okay, well, they're searching and then they're searching again. So the first time they searched, the first set of results really didn't bring them what they were looking for. So if we can see that somebody looking for beige commonly has to search again and again and again, we may want to, again, look at that beige search results and try to improve it. 
Um, so this is just going to give us a general idea. A lot of times with this is we have very little data we're looking at here, but a lot of times what this gives us too um, is an idea from which pages are sort of dead end. So users have gotten there. Um, here's an example, uh, you know, about our mineral makeup. So this is a, actually a page where we just talk about the different features of our mineral makeup, but we actually don't provide great calls to action here. So we may over time see that uh, you know many more users search from this page, um, and maybe we decide at the bottom of that page or somewhere on that page to provide some navigation, some direction for them to go um, and not force them into that search experience.